Let's go ahead and bow in prayer. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you for who you are. You have given us the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, but the Ten Commandments. And you expect us to keep these commandments, but not only did you expect us to keep them, you enable us to keep them by the power of your mighty Spirit. Dear God, we just pray that we will be yielded and surrendered to you more often than not that we will be walking in the power and strength of your spirit, that we can fulfill all the commandments you've given us because in your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit obeys all the commandments and walks, and we can walk in the power and strength of your, of your spirit because you are perfect. And so, Father, we are perfect in you. Thank you, dear God, for making us flawless through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you and praise you for those for, for that ability, for that enabling that you have given us. So, Father, we pray that we will hide these, your word in our hearts, the commandments in our hearts, Lord, that we may remember that when we are walking outside of these, that we need to surrender and submit to your spirit. And, Father, we just praise you and thank you because we ask these things, we pray these things, and we believe these things in the most wonderful, powerful name. Whose name? Amen. Whose name? Say it loud. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the first commandment. I am the Lord your God who has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, let me say right here, Egypt is a representative of the world. The world of sin and selfishness and, and focusing on, on uh, all that is against God. I am the Lord your God who has brought you out of the land of Egypt or the land of sin. The, the power of sin. Out of the house of slavery, sin enslaves us. Sin enslaves us. No matter how good it feels temporarily, it will enslave us. Uh, he goes on to say, you shall have blank. No. no other gods before me. No other gods before me. Now, let me ask you, uh, what are some of the ways in modern times, in your and my life, where we have other gods before us. Can you shout it out? Some of the ways. Our families, Our families yes. Our families can become uh, more important than God, and that should never happen. I'm glad you brought that out. Um, I love my family. I love all my kids. We love all of our kids, right, honey? We love them all, and they're dear to us, but they're not more important than God. Because God has given us our families. Amen. One of the, one of the things that uh, Dr. Gregory Frizzell says, if you put your family before God, that is the best way to lose your family. If you put your family before God, you may end up losing your family. So it's always, it's always more important to put God first and everybody else a distant, distant second. Amen. You shall not have no other gods before me. What's another way besides family that we can put gods before us? Anybody? Yes, Pastor Ray. There's a lot out there that distracts our attention and makes God second by sports and TV and uh, camping and everything else out there that distracts us. That's right. Almost anything can become a distraction to us putting, uh, putting those things before before our God. It is God first and everything else a distant second. If we walk in the power and strength of what God wants us to do, all these other things will be added to us at the right place, at the right time. Amen? Amen. They will be added to us. So uh, let us remember to put uh, God first in every area of our lives with our families, our friends, our jobs, our school, our whatever. God always comes first. Amen? And, and, and He will bless and pour His favor upon us when we do that. Any other ways besides that? Well, we covered pretty much all, all of that. Uh, number two is, on the next PowerPoint screen says, uh, you shall not make for yourself any idols or any likeness, any form 
manifestation of what is in heaven. Heaven what? Heaven above, <laughs> or on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth, as an object to worship. You shall not blank them. Worship, worship them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous, impassioned God. Now, this is a righteous jealousy that is not displayed in, in most of us. God is a jealous God. He's not jealous for himself. He is jealous for us. He wants us to have his very best because his best is the only best. And he's jealous for us, not for him. He's jealous for us. He wants us to have the very, very, very best, and the very best is him. And he goes on to say, you shall not worship nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine. We belong to the Lord God. We belong to him. The whole entire universe belongs to him. And he's visiting and avenging the iniquity and sin, the guilt of the fathers on the children that is, that is calling the children to account for the sins of their fathers. I know in uh, Samuel we read that, uh, that Saul had made a vow to the Lord to protect the Gibeonites. And then later on he attacks the Gibeonites. And... David becomes king, and, and then God caused a famine to come upon Israel. And the reason he did is because the, the vow that Saul uh, had made was, was broken. And David had to reconcile to God for the vow that was broken to God and to the Gibeonites. He ended up having to... Uh, uh, actually, he had he. They called for seven men to be uh, executed to reconcile to the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites actually asked for that, and then they were. Th then once that was done, those seven men that were were executed because of Saul's breaking of the vow. Then God relented on the. Uh, the famine in Israel. Brothers and sisters, I know that that's not a very popular side of God that, that, that people uh, understand, but our God is a very, very holy, righteous God, and vows will be paid to Him one way or another. So we must remember that, uh, that it is important that that we, if we make a vow, we make sure it's a, a vow that God wants us to make, and then we make sure that God, that we fulfill that vow and ask God to help us fulfill that vow. Amen? Amen. So, uh, you shall not make for yourself any, any idols. What are some of the idols that we have in our world today? Well, there's a great number, right? Anybody shout out one, one or two of them? Food. Food's one. Is what's that? What else? Telephone. Telephone yes. Internet. Uh, television. Sports. We, you can, we can go on and naming them. Naming them. Uh, list. Uh, list after list. Again, we we need to put God first. God, what do you want me to do today? God, what do you want me to wear today? God, what do you want me to uh, eat today? Amen. If we, if we consulted God on what he wanted us to eat, we would probably eat much better, wouldn't we? So anyway, there's all kinds of things. In the, in the, uh, let me finish reading it. Oh, he goes on to say, For I am the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, demanding what is rightfully and uniquely mine, visiting and avenging the iniquity, the sin and guilt of the fathers of the children that is calling the children to account for the sins of their fathers. To the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. When we put idols before God, he sees that as hatred towards him. And he's right, isn't he? Anybody going to call out God? Anyway, but showing graciousness, and here's, here's the blessing, but showing graciousness 
and steadfast loving kindness to thousands of generations of those who love me and, what'd you say? Keep, good one, Stace, and keep my commandments. God is very, uh, he wants to bless us. Let us keep his commandments so that blessings can flow, amen. In the next PowerPoint screen, we read the third commandment. You shall not take the name, name of the Lord your God in and in vain means that is irreverently in false affirmations or in ways that impugn the character of God. For the Lord God will not hold guiltless nor leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain, disregarding its reverence and its power. Amen. Uh, we probably hear not so much of ourselves, but, but co-workers, etc., using the Lord's name in vain. And uh, it, should, it should make us cringe a little bit when we hear that because we know the power and reverence that we should be having for the Lord God. Amen? And uh, um, what are some of the ways that we take the, Lord's God, the Lord God's name in vain? Um, sometimes when we, uh, when we pray for things or pray against people, or when we pray for things that we know we shouldn't be getting, when we pray, uh, pray for things that, that, um, that are just for our, our selfishness rather than for His glory, those are kinds of things that we pray uh, and use His name for the wrong things. So that's the third one. The fourth one is, uh, the fourth commandment in the next PowerPoint screen says, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. holy. Now, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger. Make the heavens and the earth... Oh, wait, excuse me. Stranger who is within your gates. For in the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all the things that him and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, I know there, there's some controversy on this. Uh, the, this. The Sabbath is on Saturday. There's no question about that. The, the seventh day is Saturday. Uh, the reason we as Christians celebrate or that we dedicate uh, Sunday is because Jesus rose again from the dead on Sunday. He rose again from the dead on Sunday. And then the, and then the church, uh, the early church, the, uh, Peter and Paul, they all met on the first day of the week. They gave their offerings on the first day of the week. So the, we are still to keep it holy. We're still to keep uh, and remember that we should dedicate a day to the Lord. And that should be Sunday. Now, it used to be years ago that people would go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night. They'd go to church on Wednesday night and visitation on Saturday. And, and the church was the focal point of, of people's lives. But now with so much going on in the world, there's so many distractions People have pulled away from that. Uh, you've heard the term twice on Sunday. That originated because people went to church twice on Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we need to remember to keep it holy. Not uh, Sunday, but all the entire week. The entire week should be dedicated to the Lord. We should be walking in the power and strength of His Spirit every day of the week and then worship and praise him on sunday amen well in the um well in society how has society not remembered god's holy day well, remember their, their stores were closed on sunday remember that a long time ago stores were closed on sunday liquor stores were closed on sunday there was a lot of things closed on sunday the only one that's closed on Sunday now is Chick-fil-A. 
and, and Hobby Lobby. Um, that's how society has gotten away from uh, keeping the Sabbath holy. Now, the fifth one, the next PowerPoint screen, we read uh, blank honor. Thank you, Stacy. Honor, respect, obey, and care for your father and your mother so that your days may be prolonged in the land the Lord God gives you. Now, again, these are, these are commandments to Israel, but they still apply today. They still apply today. In fact, we're supposed to even go above and beyond these commandments. Uh, as I give rides to uh, a lot of elderly people, uh, a, lot, a lot of elderly people uh, share that society has forgotten them and sometimes even their own children. This is not what God intended. We as, as, as children, we are to take care of our parents. It's not, it's not the government's responsibility to take care of our parents. It's our responsibility. And uh, so we should do all that we can to help our parents uh, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, morally, in every way. We should be doing that. Now, uh, the, way, the way our society is set up, it's pretty difficult to, to have, unless you have a, a, one, one of the, uh, unless you have a couple who, who has that a stay-at-home person who, does, who can take care of them, it's all, virtually impossible to take care of them if you're, still, if you're both working. But anyway, we are still to know that it's not somebody else's responsibility to take care of your parents, it's our responsibility. Amen? And the way we treat our parents, think about this, the way we take care of our parents, our kids are watching because that's how they're going to take care of us. <laughs> so remember, it's a good thing to uh, take care of your, your parents as well as you can. And even sacrificially. Any other uh, ideas about honoring your father and mother? By the way, they still have very good advice. They have very good advice. They may not know how to do technology and, uh, uh, and they're not uh, really uh, up to speed on, on internet and all that stuff, Instagram, but they have wisdom of the words of life, especially if they're Christians, especially if they've been in God's word many years. Okay, let's continue on uh, in the next PowerPoint screen. You shall not commit murder. murder. Unjustified, deliberate homicide. Um, and, the, and the first thing that comes to mind is, is of course, uh, abortion. And God knows those babies. He knows them. He knew you before the foundation of the world. He, kn he knew you. He knows you. He knows me. And he says, I know the number of your days. God doesn't see those, those babies as a ball of flesh. He sees them as people. So another, another thing is, let me ask you a question. What's another way that a, a person could commit murder with a, with a brother or sister? Yes, Jeannie. Exactly. God sees hatred towards a brother or sister as murder. We're not supposed to hate anybody. We're not supposed to uh, hate anybody to the point where we would certainly uh, want to do them any harm. In fact, God says, love your enemies and do good unto them. Pray for them. Pray for those that despitefully use you. We're supposed to do those, those things because we're different than the world. We used to be that way, but now we're not that way. Now we're uh, citizens from heaven. We are to uh, love everyone, stand for truth, don't compromise God's word, but we're still supposed to love them. That's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Only God can do that through us by his power. So we are not to commit murder. We are not to hate. We are to love one another 
and to, and to share the truth in a humble, loving way. Uh, the next PowerPoint screen says, well, wait a minute, before we go there, will somebody turn to 1 John 3.15 and read it out loud for me? Maybe Adam or Stacy or Ray or Jess. 1 John 3.15. First John three fifteen. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. That's pretty steadfast, isn't it? There, there's no uh, misinterpretation of that. Whoever hates his brother is guilty of murder, and anybody who is guilty of murder shall not. In what does it say, Pastor Ray? not inherit eternal life. We must be for forgiven for any hatred that we have. That's why we, uh, we encourage everyone to reconcile with anybody, anyone that may have ought against you that there be no bitterness, no hatred rise up among us or them that we would put ourselves in jeopardy. Not that we would lose our salvation, but that we would lose blessings as a, as a Christian. So, 1 John 3.15. In the next PowerPoint screen, in, in, in uh, number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Along with adultery is fornication or premarital intimacy. Now, um, what, is, what does Jesus say about a man or a woman who looks upon another man or woman with lust? It's adultery. It's adultery. Brothers and sisters, do you see God's standards are much higher than we even realize. And only he, only he can give us the power to, to avoid those sins by His Holy Spirit. We must be yielded and surrendered. We, as we've been studying holiness, we need to uh, exchange our life for His, denying our flesh, uh, denying ourselves, and taking up our cross and following him. That's the, the seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. That's what Jesus said if we, uh, if we look upon a man or woman with lust, or even anything else uh, with lust. Number The next PowerPoint screen, the eighth commandment is, you shall not steal. Secretly, openly, fraudulently, or even through carelessness. Uh, we, we've all had, we all have jobs, or have had jobs. We're not supposed to be careless with our, with our, uh, with our employer's things. We are entrusted by them and by God to do right by everyone, including our, our, uh, our employer. Uh, we are a representative from heaven, remember. We're not representatives of, of ourselves, but from heaven. So we should not steal in any way, shape, or form. Um, so the taking of a pen or any small thing is stealing. Being careless with, uh, uh, with our employer's vehicles or, or uh, copiers or fax machines or any of those things. Because God is our is our God. In the next PowerPoint screen, in the ninth commandment, you must not give false witness against your neighbor. That is, lie, withhold, or manipulate the truth against your neighbor or any person. Uh, this, is, this is a huge one in the sense that what's going on in our country, in our world today, there is so much false witness including me, forgive me, forgive me, Lord, of bearing any false witness against everyone, anyone. We're not, we're not even supposed to speak evil, we're not supposed to speak evil of anyone. Pray for them, yes, uh, if we have the opportunity to speak with them. We're supposed to speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. 
we're not supposed to go behind their back or on social media and and disgrace anyone we're to pray for them and if we have an ought with somebody we should go to them personally not not uh, on the world wide web and uh, condemn anyone or anything and forgive me for doing that as well uh, we're not to bear false witness that is lie withhold or manipulate any truth against any neighbor against any person Again, we are citizens from heaven. We are to avoid those, those kinds of things. So before we say or do anything, we should always consult God as to what, God, is this in line with your word? Is what I'm going to say or do or about to do, is this in line with what your truth says? We need to uh, ask God for his guidance in, in these things. Anybody have any other examples of bearing false witness? Anybody? Yes. Pardon me? Gossip. Yes, gossip. That's one of the things that, that, that God reminds us in other parts of his scripture is not to gossip. We're not to uh, uh, talk badly about anyone, especially behind their back. If we have a problem with someone, we're supposed to go to them and... Uh, Help them and pray for them humbly and lovingly uh, if they're sinning against God to, to make a, help make a correction in their lives. Uh, not to make ourselves feel better about who we are because we're in the same boat they are. We do stuff too. We just haven't done that at that particular point. We need to remember that, um, that we are in the same boat, we are in the same predicament. We need, we need people to, to pray for us and to consult us and to correct us. And Lord, forgive me for not being easily corrupt, correctable myself. In the next PowerPoint screen, we also read, you must not covet your neighbor's goods. You shall not covet his house or his wife, nor or, nor anything that belongs to your neighbor. Uh, you know, I used to get upset about people that had more money, more material things, more wealth than I did. Then I come to the realization, that's not right. God told me that's not right. It's okay if people have more money than you because whatever God gives, God expects uh, more. The more, the more you have, the more God expects, the more you are to give. Uh, in other words, if you have great ability and talents, you're supposed to use them for your glory, for his glory, not for our own glory. The more wealthy you have, finances, you to use it for his kingdom. Whatever we have, whatever we've been given, it is, it is, it is something that we are to honor God with. So I don't... Uh, I, I'm glad that there's people that have more money and things. I'm glad that, that there's people that have more abilities than, than I do. But whatever, whatever we have, we're to I'll use them all for God's glory, all for His, His, uh, His kingdom. And uh, because guess what? We're going to stand before Him and give an account for what He gave us. Did we use it for His glory? There's, there's a movement going on in America uh, where, well, it's, it's, it's called socialism. And in, in listening to what other people say, socialism is really violates three of, the, of God's Ten Commandments. The first one is socialism leads to having the government control more and more and more of your lives to the point where the government becomes God. That's what happen, happens in communism. When communism takes over the whole uh, plan of your life, then the government wants you to worship them as God. It's a replacement of God instead of God being uh, our, our God. 
government is not to, to replace God. The second, the second uh, thing that, that breaks commandment is, thou shalt not steal. Now think about it. Um, if, I, if, if I go to a bank and rob a bank, that's stealing or any other thing. But if I, if I get a group of people and we all vote to take your money, that's stealing by vote. We are not to take uh, uh, other people's or covet other people's goods by vote. Think about it. The third thing is um, uh, thou shalt not covet. Again, it goes back to what, what I said earlier. We shall not covet our neighbor's goods. It's okay that other people have, have all kinds of money. If, if they use that money to create jobs, then it benefits the whole world in some cases. Not, do they all do it? No. Do they all do right? No. But, but again, um, we're not to covet uh, our neighbor's goods. So let us go on to the last PowerPoint screen. In conclusion, now all the people witnessed the thunder and the flashings of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the smoky mountain. And as they looked, the people were afraid and they trembled and they moved backward and they stood at a safe distance. Then they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. For God has come in order to test you and in order that the fear of him, that is a profound reverence for him, will remain with you so that you do not sin. So the people stood at a safe distance, but Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. In other words, God, was, God is, is, a, is an awesome, magnificent God. We can't stand in his presence without him touching us and giving us a, an ability to, to be holy. And I know I make mistakes all the time, and God forgive me. And, and, Lord, and God forgive me, Lord forgive me. Even, even, if, even as, I, as I stand here, sometimes I, I make mistakes. But, my, but our, purpose, our purpose should always be to glorify the Lord God, to, to lift him up, to exalt him, and to understand his words in the most righteous way that we can by his power and glory. So let us bow in prayer.